Welcome to a very special anniversary edition of Let's Turn This Box Truck Into an RV. And we're going to start this episode off right. Uh, this is Duke. This is a Frisbee. And you know what we got to do. You ready? Hi. Get it? Okay, this video is off to a good start. So, about a year ago, just a little over a year ago, I purchased this box truck with the intention of turning it into an RV. And I have learned just a ton of things through the course of doing this project and had a lot of fun with it. And a lot of the things I've learned, I've learned off of eBay. So one of the things I'm trying to do with these videos is to give a little bit back. And hopefully other people can benefit from some of the things that, uh, that I can show. Some of the mistakes I've made, some of the good things, and uh, hopefully find it a little bit entertaining. So that's the purpose of doing these videos. Uh, so this is going to be kind of a recap. Well, we got one more thing to do here, I see. Come on, bring it in. Hi. We could do this all day, I think. Nice job. Okay, so I purchased a 2011 box truck. It has a 16-foot box made by Superior on the back. It's got about 90,000 miles on it. Uh, I picked it up in Denver, Colorado. Uh, had a little less rust than most of the uh, trucks you find here in Wisconsin. Speaking of Wisconsin, it's a beautiful day. It's January 27th and it's in the 30s out here with blue sky. So it's a, it's a gorgeous day. Look, we got some eagles circling overhead. It's a beautiful day. But back to the lecture at hand. This uh, box truck has a cowl, I think that's what they call it, over the top. And that's one of the features I really wanted so that there's a cutaway between the cab and the box that you can get from the cab to the back. That was one thing I really looked for. Uh, I was originally going to get an 18-foot box truck. My wife talked me into a 16-foot box truck. And uh, no complaints. It's a good size. Uh, you can still see this was a water delivery truck. I don't know if you can see it says water dynamics up here on the top yet. At one time it looked like it was uh, skinned with vinyl and had some decals on it. So it's no longer a water dynamics truck. It's a uh, Rich's box truck to RV. So I'll take you a walk around the outside and take you a walk around the inside. And I'm going to just recap a lot of the things we've done in the last hundred or so episodes. Uh, from the outside, I wanted it to be just a very plain uh, box truck. You know, white is a good color, too. You know, a lot of the ones you find are the yellow Penske trucks or the U-Haul trucks. Uh, this one was just white. So one of my goals is to make it a little stealthy so that just people don't know it's an RV and have a little fun with it. And so I think I've been very successful in that regard, just trying to keep the outside as clean and as uh, unsuspicious as possible. I've added a ton of weight to this thing, so one of the things I did is I had some air shocks installed underneath here. Uh, let's just see if we can see them. Probably not, but there's some air shocks up there, trust me. And they come out to these two little air fittings so that I can adjust the height of the truck to compensate for the weight in the back and still keep a good ride and good handling. Well, okay. This could go on for a while. All right, so over here I've got the electrical panel. I cut this panel in. I purchased the aluminum uh, uh, extrusions to make the frame and make the door, and this worked out quite well. I wish I had some kind of a pneumatic cylinder to hold this open, but when it is open, I really want to hold it all the way open, too. I don't want it just open part way, and so a lot of the cylinders, I don't know if I could get one to hold it all the way open or not. Regardless, what I've got here is a, let me put this back together here a little bit. A piece of doweling. And it's got a little hook up here. I slip that in there and it holds the door open. So pretty simple solution and it works well. In here is the electrical, obviously. This is a shore power cable, and there's two ways to get shore power. This is one, and there's also an outlet on the other side which I'll show you in a minute. Got to be a little careful with that because the shore power has a, a male plug that sticks out and it's live and that's why I've put this protective uh, female plug on here and painted it red because when you take this off if shore power is plugged in on the other side you got a live, live cable there. So shore power comes in AC 
And then this is the house AC wiring. This goes off to the uh, outlets in the uh, box. And if I want to switch from shore power to the inverter, I just move the plug over like this and I can turn on the inverter. So I don't have an automatic switch for that, but this works out just fine. As far as the low voltage goes, uh, the batteries are on the other side. I'll show you in a minute. This is a battery charger. I've got a fuse block here and I've carefully labeled it for what's what. So this comes in, there's a breaker to get to the fuse panel. I've also just got a voltage monitor here to keep an eye on the voltage back here. And of course the inverter. So come on around back. Another thing I really looked for in this box truck was these uh, smaller barn doors, I think they call them. They're still kind of dirty. I could clean this up. In fact, you can see the one's got a little bit of uh, leftover vinyl wrap on it here. So these could be cleaned up a little bit, but uh, in a way I kind of like the, again, kind of rustic, unsuspicious look. So, show you why I wanted these doors. Open them up here. This one you just reach around and pull the cable to get loose. So from the back I've got a window here, a regular house window. It's a four foot by four foot house window. And then on either side I've got a panel of aluminum and I went to banners.com and purchased a, a banner uh, of a picture. And yeah, you got it right. That's Duke over there. That's Duke right here to wanting to throw another frisbee. So we got a picture and the idea is when you close these doors, that picture uh, shows up from inside through the window. Like I said, this could be a long video. Oh, you missed that one, big guy. Which is really cool and it works out really nice. It kind of gives you the illusion that you're outside and you're looking out a window even when these back doors are closed. Also, down here, I've got a storage area. Again, I made this door out of some leftover pieces. If I open this up, this is my, again, very simple solution to keep this open. I just put a little piece of wood in there and it keeps it open. So this is a storage area. This is not an insulated area. And in fact, it's even lined with some leftover aluminum all the way around. All sides are lined with aluminum. Well, this side, yeah, it actually is. It does have aluminum. No, there's no aluminum on this side. Take that back. There's aluminum over here and the other sides. And uh, as you can see, a storage for a generator. And I've got two awesome, awesome 12 volt batteries here hooked up. And this is where the water comes into the water tank. So if I want to fill the water tank, I have to hook this to a hose. Right now I've got a little plug in it with a rag stuck in it just to keep bugs and things out, but still allow it to breathe. So that I think is going to work out. I don't have the plumbing yet. This project is not done. I may be uh, thinking 90% done. So I'm getting there. Uh, and that's why we're doing kind of a review. I made another panel on this side. They're pretty much identical from one side to another. This is the LP gas locker, and as you guessed, I've got some LP gas in here. There's a little manifold over here. There's a switchover valve, so I can have two tanks. When one goes empty, that switch is supposed to flip over and let the other one uh, turn on. Again, I've got a piece of doweling to keep this open and a little uh, clip up here to put the dowel in. So this works out very nicely. Uh, the door was actually made from the piece that I cut out here. So it blends in perfectly. All right. Hey. All right, that's a good one. All right, continuing around. This is where the furnace comes out. It's one of the few things that uh, that gives it away that it's an RV uh, or there's something going on in here besides just a box truck. I cut this door in the side, same thing, I made the door with some leftover extrusions that came out of the inside of the box truck, and I used the piece I cut out for the door panel, so it blends in pretty well. Uh, I put in these steps so that you can get in the side, and come on in, I'll show you around here. One of my goals here was to make the inside, I'll say luxurious, like a fine hotel room. I wanted it to, to be a, a little, really, special inside so you can see I've got some oak red oak paneling here my paints chipping off a little bit I have to do something with that but I think the door looks nice and as you can see 
I've got some skylights up here. This had a, I guess they call it a china top. So it was all translucent, but I've framed in the ceiling and I put some ash on the ceiling, hardwood ash paneling that I think looks just beautiful. I've got a funky light fixture here. Uh, this is what I call the great room area. So this is kind of the sitting, eating, kitchen, dinette area. There's a microwave oven cabinet, refrigerator, some storage above the bed in the back. You can see right out the back window. You can see the back window is open and you get a breeze through here. Some storage above the bed back here. Kitchen cupboards and a sink base. Uh, I still haven't finished the countertop. I'm working on a countertop. I'm going to put some type of backsplash here. Not quite sure what yet. But you can see I've got some red oak paneling all the way around. And that's what I just finished putting up. And this too I think came out very nicely. Coming around this way. I've got a curtain. Now this is just a temporary shower curtain. I plan on putting a very heavy opaque uh, thermal blocking curtain uh, on one side and then on the other side there'll be something a little funky or interesting to make it to make it uh, make it look cool from this side when it's uh, when it's open. Originally I was going to do two panels and pull them left and right but I think I'm just going to do one panel and pull it all the way over to this side. That way I can put maybe a few coat hooks here because I don't have a coat closet in here. Uh, I've got some speakers up here and here and some more speakers in the back. They're all hooked into a stereo here. It's kind of the wiring console. I've got a battery monitor. Right now we're running off the battery so it is not charging. And uh, this is a switch for the fan. Now the fan I hid up here in this cabinet and I've got a vent on both sides to allow for good airflow and uh, if you flip the switch the fan comes on I don't have the roof open right now there's a crank up here and you have to crank to open it so you do have to open it and then down turns off the fan this is for the uh, furnace uh, there's a temperature probe this is a thermostat and so if I turn this on the furnace is kicking in so where's the furnace? Um, it's hidden down underneath here. I'm going to have a tough time. I'm going to set this camera down for a second here. Let's see if I can show you this. We're still working on the kinks here. So I don't know if that's going to stay up there. No, it's not going to stay up there. So, underneath here is a trap door for the furnace. And as you can see, it just kicked in. I just turned it on. And it's chugging out some warm air. The warm air vents come out here. There's also a vent pipe down here that comes in front of the sink base and allows the hot air to come out over here. So we're heating the outside right now, but hey, this is, uh, we'll be done here in a few minutes. Over on this side, is the water tank. I haven't finished this up either. The plumbing has not been tested at all. There's a little work that needs to be done down here yet. Uh, there's some wiring. I've got a, a CO2 sensor that's going to be mounted down here. There's a little more work to be done there as well. So let's see if I can drop this back down there. So, uh, I still have to put the sink in here, like I said, and finish up the plumbing. I need to trim up and finish up this little cubby hole down there. Uh, I've got a couple drawers that still need to be fitted in here. The other thing that's missing from this uh, box truck is a bathroom. There's no bathroom in here, and that was a, that was a tough call. I, you know, you can really argue, Rich, you really should put a bathroom in here. But I didn't, and my solution is a porta potty. I bought a traditional uh, Tel Telford, I think is the brand, porta potty, and this is what I call the porta potty garage. If and when the porta potty's not in here, it also works really well for keeping this little buddy heater. 
So I've got a gas line that runs from here back to the uh, gas tanks in the back. And you can just pull this little heater out. And uh, this thing really works great. I love this little heater. And I still have to put the door on down here. I still have to finish up a little electrical. Uh, but it's really coming along. So we're anxious to get this out on the road a little bit more. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, about the, uh, it's about the journey, not the destination. This project has been uh, just a lot of fun. So many challenges as far as uh, electrical and plumbing and appliances too. Yep. And uh, all the woodwork that's going in here. It's just been a really fun project. A lot of challenges. And when you start a project like this, you know, you're all gung-ho and you just go at it with great gusto. And then you get about halfway through and you start to be like, oh boy, that was, that was a lot of work. And then you get like 80% of the way through and a lot of people just peter out on projects. So one of the challenges is if you're going to start a big project like this is to follow through. Uh, fortunately, I haven't lost gusto in this project. I'm still, uh, still jazzed about it and I uh, really enjoy working on it. So that's a, that's a recap of where we are at. Let me show you just a little bit more on the electrical here. I've got some lighting with these little push buttons. You can see the light comes on by the back window there. So when those doors are closed, it kind of lights up that picture. So it looks like, again, you're looking outside and it's lit outside. I also have some under cabinet lights here. And they're controlled with some push buttons under here. Same thing back here. I've got some under cabinet lights here. They are not on full brightness. There, I can brighten them up. Same thing over here. I've got a little switch here that turns these on. Same thing there. We'll brighten them up. There's a light up here, under cabinet light. Then uh, up in these skylights, I ran a little LED light up here. And those are controlled with a button right here. I don't think you can see them too well because it's pretty bright outside today. These are three LED lights. They're controlled with a little push button right here. And so I've got seven low voltage LED lighting uh, circuits in here. I've also got what I call the house light up here and that's just controlled with the switch. And then there's two outside lights as well. One right by the door up here and one around the back. And uh, this furniture I've got is probably not going to stay. These are just a couple of uh, hospital lobby chairs that happen to be in here now. Although this uh, butternut table, I kind of like it there and it kind of fits that that might stay. Uh, I have to finish the countertops. So I don't want to say I'm on the home stretch, but uh, and I'm on the home stretch and I just wanted to give you a complete recap of everything that we've done over the last year. So I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you get something out of this. Until next time.